Hello lovely people, how are you all doing today? I do hope you are well. Um, I'm okay, oh, just really enjoying the lull time. <laughs> That's what I call it, this kind of, it's a lull between the madness of Christmas and the madness of New Year's. I hope you're enjoying it too. I think for a lot of folk, there's, <laughs> There's a strong possibility that sort of this middle-ish, are we at the middle stage? I'm not sure, but this middle-ish day between Christmas and New Year, this stage, I'm sure there are a lot of you who just go, oh, thank goodness that's done. Not in a bad way, not a, oh, thank goodness that's over. Um, just having a bit of a breathing space after all that build up to Christmas and, all the cooking and washing up and some of you may have had a really quiet Christmas anyway like I did so this lull is just a continuation um, before then yeah the, all the hullabaloo of New Year's I don't do hullabaloo at New Year's anymore been there done that had great times may do it again in the future I don't know but for now I'm perfectly happy just being quiet and I was thinking about this, sorry, excuse me, um, I feel really quite tired today, I'm not sure why. I have been out, yesterday I went out and I was sort of just doing a few bits and bobs, just out stretching my legs, but I'm in that kind of oh, yawn territory too, where I could quite happily just curl up on the sofa and sleep for far too long. But yeah, no, I was just saying about um, even when I was working in terms of a paid job with fixed hours and quite often I'd work one or two, sometimes three of the days between Christmas and New Year, even in those days, I, I still treated this week in the same way that it was, I don't know what it is about this week, but for me it's really precious, it is it's just quiet actually speaking of quiet i'm just going to go and close the kitchen door because i can hear one of the motors kicking in give me a tick so much for quiet time um yeah that's the uh that's the freezer motor it has also now started to make way too much noise um the fridge <laughs> i'm turning off today i'm going to just turn it off completely because now <laughs> I don't think there's any seal around the door at all, despite having, I've got a chair and I've got my big jar, my penny pot, which I normally empty. I'll talk about that another day. It would normally be empty by now. I haven't emptied it because it's heavy. Uh, but yeah, every, it's, you can tell it's not, anyway, the fridge is dead. Long live the fridge. Um, yeah next year is going to be a very expensive year but i have planned for it more of that in separate videos as we go into next year i'm going to do some financial videos but yeah back to this this lull thing i think it's something to do with you know people are back to work there are i mean some people worked over christmas of course let's never forget that there are people who work over christmas but for the most part you know the majority of the population are having Christmas off and New Year's because it's a bank holiday. Holiday. <laughs> I sound a bit South End then. Um, South End, what fun. I haven't been to South End for ages. I feel like a day out to South End. Go down the pier and the beach chips. Anyway, digressing. Yeah, so in this week where, yeah, folk are back to work, shops are open again. But it's so quiet out on the street at the moment, so quiet. There's hardly any traffic, there's hardly anyone around. And it does have that slightly, it's not magical, but it's ju it just feels different. It feels different. It feels quieter and it feels slower. And goodness knows we all need that, don't we? We need to, well, not everybody, but a lot of us, we need to just take time to slow down every now and again and take time to be really quiet. 
listen to our own thoughts, listen to our hearts, all that sort of stuff. Um, I love it. And also, I'm not going to say it's a tradition as such, but I just noticed it's a habit with me. I've been doing it for years that in this week, pretty much after Boxing Day, so pretty much by the 27th of December, I get the urge to clean. <laughs> I know, shock horror. I hate housework. But yeah, I get this huge urge to to clean, to tidy, to organise. And it's it's like a it's a day of chaos where I just I want to wash everything. Obviously, you know, change the bed. We do all that or we do that all the time anyway, don't we? But things like throws on the sofa, cushion covers on the sofa, you know, anything that's made of fabric <laughs> that sits out, I want to take it off and get it washed. I want to give all my pillows a good bang. Dust and dust in every little crevice, every little nook and cranny. Polish things, glean things up, even things like dusting every leaf on each of my house plants. There's this huge urge in me to do that. And I think, I think it's partly the nesting thing because it's winter. I want my nest to be nice. Um, but I think it's, it's also part of that, um, I was going to say circadian rhythm, but that's the daily rhythm. What's the rhythm called when it's the year? circannual rhythm i don't i can't remember what the name is but there's that there's a name for it where it's it's to do with the rhythm of the year and our body's response to changing light um so i think what happens with me in my home is that it's a literal uh a manifestation of that sort of expectation of renewal that's going to come in spring um yeah the sort of the, the rebirth that we see in nature it's like <laughs> i'm getting on with it in the in the cottage in the sky way before spring is even here but yeah so i had a day um i'm i'm now all clean spick and span mostly yeah yeah pretty clean but also uh Tidying. Now I'm quite tidy, even though I hate housework, I'm pretty tidy, I'm a bit OCD. Well, as you know from, if you've watched my garden videos, cut those path edges. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm generally tidy anyway. But you know what it's like, sometimes like with the bureau, I've got an elastic band or a paper clip and I just pop them inside the bureau rather than putting them into their pot inside the bureau just little tiny things like that so yeah a good tidy up as well all those little bits and bobs which have been sitting around for ages awaiting my attention for whatever reason i've got a sewing pile as in repairs bits and bobs like that so and now i've got one stack of bits and bobs and a list and what they need to have done to them or they've been put away, finally put away, um, finding new homes for things, uh, a little reshuffle on the, on the bookcase because of course that gorgeous volume of poetry from Patricia. I want to show you something else from Christmas in a minute. But yeah, just having a little rearrangement on my bookcase in order to fit Patricia's volume of poetry into my poetry section. All sorts of little ti tiny tidy stuff and I think it is that thing of of you know the psychology of a new year starting of wanting to start out on my best foot excuse me I need a glug I've still got this lingering bit of cold it's it's got to be about two weeks now and it's a bit annoying because you know I'm eating well I'm resting well I'm not sleeping well I never do but you know, I'm not running around like a maniac. Anyway, never mind. So also, as part of my um, sort of best foot forward into next year, this is the time of year when I start to 
look at my accounts and my finances for the whole of next year and that is definitely a video I'll make as we go into the new year. I've, I've done, I think I've done a budget for the year videos a couple of times maybe in the past. Um, but yeah, I, I, I will share that with you again in the new year. And like I said, look, like with the fridge, next year is going to be a fiercely expensive year because it's going to be my house move year. Please, 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 please let me find somewhere. Um, yeah, it's going to be fiercely expensive. I have been saving like mad. How on earth do you do that, Vivi, on such a low income? All will be explained as we go into next year. So yeah, I sat down last night and uh, did as much, was it last, no, night before, I'm losing track of days, doesn't matter. Anyway, I did as much as I could, obviously I've got online banking too, but I did as much as I could before banks have reopened today, that's right, because we had bank holiday. Uh, so yeah, my finances, my budget for next year is almost, it's pretty much done. I've got a couple of things to tweak ever so slightly as we go into next year. Again, I'll explain that more when we do a budgeting video. Yay! So yeah, I'm just making the most of this time, the time between the two crazy times. Um, the weather is horrid today, really, really horrible. I mean, high wind, but just this constant drizzle. So I'm not going to go to the garden. I kind of wanted to today. Hopefully, I think in two days time, the forecast says we're gonna have some dry weather. So yay, some garden time. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, it's kind of hunkering down and using this as a time, like I said, to just be really thorough about, okay, what needs doing? What is an outstanding job? I know we all have them. And I'm not talking about outstanding as in, say, craft projects, which we pick up and put down, pick up, put down. I'm talking things like home maintenance, um, clothing repairs, you know, the kind of thing. I mean, maybe something you could do as well is during this period. And you know what, especially if you're not planning a big New Year's thing, excuse me. I need to go and find my strepsils, don't I? Um, <clears throat> yes, if you're not planning to do a big New Year's thing, uh, we've got a few days now, haven't we, in the... Well, I don't know what the date is, sorry. Most people would be back to work on the 2nd of January. Anyway... What I'm suggesting is maybe um, you can go around your flat or home with a notepad, a clipboard. I love a clipboard. I do love a clipboard. Somehow, <laughs> do you know what it is? I'm sure there's a psychology to this as well. Somehow, if I've got a pad of paper in my clipboard and a pen and I go around doing things, it feels like, well, they're as good as done, aren't they? Because if they're on a clipboard, that's really proper, isn't it? So I write it on there. Oh, it's good as done. What I'm going to suggest is, and I do this in my home, I do it in the garden, every now and again, uh, so at home I will do it during this lull week, is go around each room and really thoroughly make notes of what needs doing. Whether you're moving home or not, so if you're moving home, yeah, the, that list might get quite long because there's going to be loads of all those snagging jobs. But you know what, why, why wait? Why wait until you're about to move home to do a snagging list? Do it, do it for yourself anyway. So, you know, silly things like if that coat hook has kind of partly come out of the wall and has been wobbly for ages, maybe it's time to finally take it down, fill that hole and remount it. You might need a bigger wall plug, you might need a bigger screw, whatever it is. But that wobbly coat hook that's been annoying you for two years or something that's i think of all the little all that little trickle of energy of being annoyed by something for two years it's a trickle out of your energy get it fixed and stop letting your energy trickle away being annoyed by it so yeah um i will be doing it myself go around with my clipboard i have got a clipboard here 
make a list of all the jobs that need doing, literally every single little job that needs doing. And then I'll look at my list, I'll come and have a sit down, I might even do it with a glass of wine or something, just make it nice and relaxed, is to say, right, to, to accomplish these jobs, do I need to buy anything? Do I need to buy any supplies? Do I need to buy some plaster for the walls, for example? Or, you know, I'm repairing that, that summer dress. Do I need a thread in a colour that I don't actually have in my thread box? Do I need to buy some red thread, for example? So then I make a list of what supplies do I need in order to achieve the job. But I also think about what sort of time I need. Is it a five minute job? Is it a one day job? Is it a job where I need two pairs of hands? Is it a job where I'm gonna to need to ask a friend to give me a bit of help? And if that's the case, have a little ring around my friends, give them advance warning, don't leave it till the last minute. Find out, okay, you're gonna be free on the weekend of the 24th of January, for instance. I don't know if that's a weekend. Um, and say, okay, can I can I book you in? And you know, come and help me with it. I'll take you to the pub after and buy you a pint or I'll cook you dinner, whatever it is. Anyway, yeah, so that's what I'll be doing as well. Creating a snagging list for the whole flat, not just in terms of selling the flat, but in terms of, you know, repairs and like clothes or whatever, it, or just where things, you know, sometimes you have something new comes into your life and you put it down and you don't find a proper home for it. I'm a firm believer in a place for everything and everything in its place. It makes tidying up so much easier if you know where something is supposed to go. So maybe you've got something new in your life, like Christmas, you might have had a Christmas gift. You might have had a kitchen gadget for Christmas, lucky you. Um, but now you're like, where am I gonna put it? So for now it's sitting on the side in the kitchen, but you think, well, I wanna find somewhere that I can put it away so it doesn't get dusty or it's not cluttering the countertop. If, like me, you've only got quite a small counter, you don't necessarily want to have all your gadgets out all the time. So maybe the knock-on of that, see, this is the snagging list thing, not just in terms of what do I need to buy in terms of supplies to enable me to do the job, but let's say, oh, the the popular, the big item that everyone's after these days is an air fryer, it seems. How did we live without air fryers? Ah! Um, so maybe you got an air fryer for Christmas and now you want to be able to find somewhere to put it away, but your cupboards are all really cluttered and messy. You know the Tupperware cupboard? The pots with the unmatching lids and they're always everywhere. So maybe now is the perfect opportunity to say, right, do you know what? That air fryer is going to have a home in that cupboard. That cupboard is a mess. I'm going to have a sort out. So maybe a little job like finding a new home for your brand new uh, air fryer turns into a two, three hour job because in order to put it away, you need to have a clear out of your cupboards. This is the perfect opportunity of, you know, maybe you can hand, if it's kitchen stuff, is there a homeless shelter near you that could do with extra plates, crockery, what have, pans, pans especially, um, charity shops, all that. Or maybe you've got, you know, kids who are just about to go off to uni. Some of that Tupperware, some of your spare pans, crockery, whatever it is, that can be a bundle come next September for your kids to take off to university. Anyway. You know what I'm saying, you get the point. It's a great time of year to just have a really blimming good sort out because this is the other thing, isn't it? Especially for gardeners. Once we get towards March, then suddenly, it's like there's no time at home, is there? Especially if you're working outside of the home. You're at work and then your weekends, it's all about seed sowing and bed prep and carting manure and bags, you know what, anyway. I know that you all get it. So yeah, let's let's do all that indoor stuff now in the winter when we've got these really dreary days going on. I can't wait. I don't have much of a sort out, clear out to do this year because I do it every year. I do it every year so nothing ever builds up. But there are a few things I've been thinking about and wondering about and thinking, is it time to let them go? Um, 
again we'll cover that in a separate video now i've got on my lap um it's my old hot water bottle do you remember i had that lovely parcel from nikki which included my brand new hot water bottle and a couple of people um after the christmas video by the way thank you all thank you so much for joining me for for christmas day because i know it's a really long one and at the end i hadn't realized how long i've been chatting it was only <laughs> because the battery on the camera was dying i thought oh crikey um yeah once it was edited i thought oh gosh no one's going to want to watch this it's too long um but i know well so many of you did and you actually liked it being long because as many of you said you were on your own you're having a bit of a tough year or whatever so you shared some of it with me and and you enjoyed it so thank you all thank you all so much for watching also just before i talk about the hot water bottle do you remember towards the end of the video oh i felt so bad about this afterwards I was looking for a card because I wanted to say a thank you, couldn't find the card. And I said, well, never mind that. I'm going to say a hello to a young chap, an eight-year-old. And I called him Tom. And then I said, I think his mum's called Linda. Anyway, it wasn't. It's Ted. I found the card. <laughs> I found your card. It, it was right under some wrapping paper. I apologise. It wasn't Tom. It was Ted and his mum, Amy. So now I'm going to say a proper belated happy christmas and happy new year to ted oh, yeah i'm really sorry i i messed up with that one i got the tea bit but that was about it anyway yeah so back to that video and comments and the hot water bottle and a few folks said how about filling it with sand or something and using it as a kneeler in the garden yeah the only thing is i cannot kneel <laughs> I can't knee my my knees won't bend won't bend into the kneeling position anymore um and I wouldn't put that pressure through my knees so that would be no good for me it might be good for someone else but there was another idea and I thought oh yeah I could run with that so imagine if I cut down the side here down here and then across here back up that side and take that that little chunk off the front then I've got like a pocket here. I could fill it with soil and have a little hanging a hanging planter because look, it's already got the hanger. I was thinking, yeah, you could you could hang that on a fence, couldn't you? It'd have to be, it's quite heavy actually. You'd have to have a sturdy fence or maybe on the fence pole. But um, but yeah, pop something in there, a trailing something. Maybe uh, actually, you'd need to remember to put some. Uh, drainage holes in the bottom but yeah a trailing something over that um, if it was a tomato plant you'd have pink and red and the green it'd be like Wah! <laughs> a girl's garden that's not to say that boys can't enjoy pink too of course they can oh Vivi sexism um, but yeah but it might be better planted up with something rather than a, a vegetable something maybe something that's a bit more permanent and I was thinking maybe something like a succulenty type thing um so yeah with a with a good free draining gritty soil yeah, it'd be funny anyway wouldn't it so I could have my flower bed and my hot water bottle in my bed <laughs> I don't know for now though i've kept it i'm keeping it as a sort of a spare a backup i mean i don't know why who needs a spare tomato tomato it's not a tomato who needs a spare um hot water bottle well i suppose if I had someone else coming to stay and it was the winter it'd be good to have a second one wouldn't it um yeah anyway yes yeah, so i'm i'll I, I couldn't bear to throw it because it's such a chunk of something isn't it Okay, so oh yes, and I wanted to I wanted to share a couple of things that um, I unwrapped, and it leads on to again it's le it's everything's leading towards next year and the house move and something I did when I moved in here because it is it's now I moved in early December two thousand and three so it's twenty years here. When I moved in here, I oh excuse me, I had a fixed mortgage and I fixed the rate for two years 
I didn't want to do a five year fix because I had no intention of being here for five years. Uh, it was definitely, it's like, oh, this is just gonna be temporary till I get back on my feet. I'd had a breakup, you know, a relationship breakup, and this was all I could afford to buy on my own. Um, so yeah, I took out a two year fixed. Crikey, if I'd taken out a 20 year fixed. Well, I wouldn't have needed it because I've paid it off, but yeah, and then I was still here two years later, and I thought, oh yeah, I'll do another two year fixed. A five year fixed would have been much cheaper. A 10 year fixed would have been even cheaper. But I kept thinking, well, am I gonna stay? Am I gonna stay? And well, yeah, here I am 20 years later. But bearing that in mind, what I just said, so I've got something here that I did 20 years ago, pretty much to around this time. I'll show you. Anyway, but first what, but it re relates to one of the Christmas presents I've had. Excuse me, another glove. I'm getting quite warm, actually. Um, the, it's, take I've got, this is thermal. That's thermal. And then, whoop, hang on. <laughs> There's another layer under that. Four layers. Hang on a tick. It's really mild at the moment, thank goodness. So um, I had the heating on on Christmas Day. And then I got overly warm. I think I'm so used to not having much heating on. Anyway, for the last couple of days, I haven't had it on at all, which is great. And I had my December bill. I did my December meter reading. Oh, this is a good point. Um, I do my meter readings on the 20th. That's when my billing is. And you remember I said at the end of November, I keep a really close tab on my usage and at the end of November, I was pleasantly surprised and I thought I could eke out maybe an extra hour of heating a day, which I did do in the first couple of weeks of December, it was quite cold. Um, and actually, I, so I'm now right up to what I pay, so I still haven't crept into my credit yet. So I. Remember, I was, oh, I'll talk about all of that credit another day and what I'm doing with it. We'll talk about that in a... I need to do a money video with you all. Anyway, the point is, it's quite mild. Hoorah! I've lost my train of thought again. Um, yeah, oh yeah, that was it. <clears throat> so I do my meters on the 20th. However, I will do my meter again, as near as damn it to midnight on the 31st, 30 days, half September and November, all the rest of 31, 31st of December, because from the 1st of January, the prices are going up again. And I want to make sure, so from the 20th of December is my billing point, I don't want to be charged for those 11 days to 31st, the January rate, which is what will happen if I don't submit another reading. So for, yeah, everybody get on it, get on it, do your meter readings on the 31st to make sure that anything up to and including the 31st, you are charged at that lower rate. When <clears throat> October of 2022, going into, no, I think it was the October, going to the November, November was going to be the big hike. So I know that a lot of people did their meter readings at the end of October and a lot of sites crashed because we were all trying to do it. So it might even be worth doing it in the morning of the 31st. It means that the day of the 31st you'll be charged at the new rate, but at least your standard chance of getting that reading in without the site crashing. So yeah, just go and, in fact, pause the video right now, pause. There you go. Oh, I should have said, <laughs> pause the video, go and make a note to yourself in big letters, read meters, 31st of the 12th. That was the pause again. Okay. Have you read your meters? I mean, have you made a note to read your meters? Good. So yeah, um, a, a couple of other little Christmas things I opened off camera, but I wanted to share. I got this fab pair of socks from Patricia. You can see, seagulls, yay! I'm as happy as a seagull that's just stolen a chip. Thank you, lovely. Oh, I love socks. I tried my reading socks on Christmas day evening. My reading socks from Susan, gorgeous. Oh, talking of Susan, 
in the parcel was this spoon. I thought, gosh, that's an odd thing. But on the spoon, I don't know if it's going to pick up. Can you see it's got writing on it? You can't see on the spoon, can you? It has writing on it and it says, drink tea, read books, be happy. <laughs> yes. So I'm not much of a tea drinker, but perfect spoon for a hot chocolate. So drink chocolate, read books, be happy. I love the randomness of that, Susan. I pulled out, it's like, a spoon? What's she up to? Yeah, but there's a little message in the spoon. That's lovely, isn't it? <coughs> Excuse me. Something else I want to show you from Susan, but that's coming last. This, this made me squeal. Oh, sorry, gosh. I hope this... Whatever is, whatever's playing Silly What's It's does one soon. Um, Sarah and Ian, so if you remember on Christmas Day, I opened that little three pack of notebooks, really lovely. And the RNLI puffin, the little duped puffin bag. And I was saying how um, in the summer she'd sent that little parcel of love after my sister had died. And I, I said it was kind of weird because everything in it was the sort of thing my sister would get for me. Even down to the choice of wrapping paper was very much my sister's taste. They went and did it again this Christmas. It, that whole parcel, Sarah and could have come from my sister and I loved it. And I was thinking afterwards, and I'm going to do this bit without getting maudlin and sad. I was thinking, gosh, I wish Sarah and my sister had met I, I've got a feeling that if, hi Sarah, I've got a feeling that if they'd met, they'd be best friends. Uh, anyway, so this was also in their parcel, and I squealed, went yay, because, for those, some of you might not have seen it, but I did a video a few weeks ago called My Sister the Sea and Me, I think. And I was talking about Obviously, me and my sister's love of the sea and Dorset and Sea Shaken Houses, that book. But also just as Brits, you know, we are a maritime nation. Um, we are we are bordered by sea all the way around. And, and so much of our, our culture is saturated with maritime um, influences, whether it's sort of common phrases we use, and in that video, I was sort of reeling off a list of words, just words, da, da, da. but they're all words which mean something to us all in, in the UK. And we might not even know exactly what it's about, but they're all words to do with the sea. And in that, I was mentioning uh, the shipping forecast and how, oh, I love it. Lundy, Portland, White, Thames, Humber, Cromarty. Dogger. It's just this lullaby. It's the nation's lullaby, isn't it? Maybe, maybe the um, shipping forecast should be our national anthem. Um, anyway, after I'd made that video, and I'd mentioned in it, there was a book I read um, years ago about a guy who travels around the shipping forecast. And I went online to see if I could find that book again. And I did see it, and I thought, I'd like to read it again. And then I thought, no, you're not justifying any spending you're not doing any spending because of this fierce expensive year to come more of that as we get into next year but i was thinking i'd love a map of because i i love maps anyway but i'd love a map to pop on my wall that's the uk but with all the the shipping areas detailed on it so again i had a look online and there are loads, there's loads of them, loads of great choice. No, no, you can't justify it. Now, also, for the last couple of years, 18 months or so, in the back of my mind, a lot of the time, is this house move. I know, you're probably all getting bored to tears with it, aren't you? I'm bored of it. <laughs> no, I'm not, I'm really excited. And, and I keep visualising different little moments, different nooks, different crannies of my new home. Obviously I don't know what it looks like because I haven't moved there yet, I haven't found a place. And I don't visualise the whole home or even the whole garden, but I visualise little 
little moments within that home and I was visualising a wall because I love my art and I've got loads of art in tubes still that I've never had framed because a lot of my walls you can't see it in this image but well, you can get a sense of it in the corner can't you the walls are sloping because I'm in the roof so I've lost out on picture hanging space and I've got so many gorgeous bits of art that when I move I want to have framed or at least you know maybe look for second hand frames but yeah there's a lot of stuff I want to frame and have my art with me again some old friends that I haven't seen for 20 years since being here some new friends and amongst that I was picturing um I've got my beautiful beautiful map of it's a 17th century map of Dorset that I have hanging in my bathroom and I was thinking I'd like to have a map of the shipping forecast anyway Sarah and Ian, God love yous. <laughs> Isn't it fab, fab, fabulous? I'm lost for words. It's a tea towel. And I'm wondering about, do I frame the tea towel? Oh, I want to use it though. My favourite tea towel. I've got favourite tea towels. Do you have favourite tea towels? I have favourite tea towels. You know... I have, I have lots of gorgeous tea towels. Some of them are very plain, ordinary, day-to-day -day tea towels, but I've got my women's suffrage tea towel, which I love. I've got my Swanage tea towel, which is nearly threadbare. But my favorite, favorite, favorite tea towel of all my tea towels is the one I showed you on that day of, it's a map of the UK with all the lifeboat stations identified on it and all the, um, with a code and then a separate bit down the side that gives all the different classes of lifeboats at each of the different stations all around the country. It's my favourite tea towel, but now, now it's got a sister. <laughs> I love it. So it's got all the, you might not be able to, where can I show you close up? Let, let me show you mine, my, my neck of the woods. If I fold it around like this, so I can see what you're, what you're seeing. Oh. <laughs> This is when I need two pairs of hands, I need to call a friend. So you see, this is my hood. Where are we? Thames, that's my shipping area. And if we come around, Dover, White, there's the Isle of Wight. And here we get to Portland, can you see there? And there is the Swanage. <laughs> um, but what I love on it as well is it's just got words. Let me show you on this side, can you see? I have to turn it back around to me to read. Just selections of words. And it's the words that we are so familiar with from the shipping forecasts. So, moderate or good? Veering. Gay late in the west. Now falling. Dissipating. Uh, what was on this side? Rough or very rough. Occasionally very poor. Moving steadily east. Fair to good. Drizzle. I, I love it. The general synopsis at midnight. Warnings of gales. Attention or shipping. I mean, it's... Sorry, I've just had my head down for too long. Then. Isn't that an absolute corker? Thank you both. Thank you so much. It's, um... Yeah, I mean, I literally... I unwrapped that, I unwrapped that and I squealed and sort of went, Yes! Yes! That's exactly what I need in my life. I need it. <laughs> I don't just want it, I need it. So I was chuffed to bits with that. Now, um, also just to say, um, because I've probably been going on too long already, the, of, uh, in terms of reading in this last couple of weeks, so I'm just looking over there, I have read two of my Treats for a Tenor books. I read another book that came to me before Christmas can't wait to share them with you and what did I just finish reading oh yeah I just I literally I think Christmas Eve Eve I Christmas Eve I'd finished reading the book that Rocky had sent the the what's it called spring rain so Christmas day night I needed a new book to start so I started call of the white this is from Martin and Michelle and this is the one about the team of eight women who ski to the pole, uh, to the South Pole. 
loving it already about 50 pages in but loving it and my bookmark is <laughs> my bookmark from Marilyn she believed she could but she was really tired so she didn't <laughs> Isn't that familiar to us all? So yeah, thank you, Martin, Michelle, and Marilyn. Oh, I've got all my M's together. That's gonna, I think that's gonna be a corker. Loving it already. Now, this is the thing I wanted to show you, this special little thing. And it, this is the thing about, the thing, the thing, the thing. Hang on, stop singing. Hang on a tick. I was mentioning something from 20 years ago. So the lovely Susan sent me a notebook. Susan, she of the reading slippers and the mad spoon. Lovely little notebook. <clears throat> I enjoy a spiral bound notebook because spiral bounds, they can sit flat on a table if I want to draw or paint even, which I'm coming to in a second. So even though it's lined paper, I'll still doodle and draw over lined paper. But what I love the lighting's tricky today. Is the little bit on the front it says, and it's a famous quote, I can't remember who the quote's from. <clears throat> if you have a garden and a library, you have everything you need. Ain't that the truth? If you have a garden and a library. And for me, that quote was made for me. <laughs> and I know for some of you too. That's my absolute joy in life. My, That's my place that's who I am that's where I'm yeah it's my thing a garden and a library to have my own garden the prospect of having my own garden so that I can open my back door my friend Kate and I were chatting just before Christmas she's the one of the which is one of my best girlfriends we met when we shared a house all those years ago full C Chelsea, Fulham Borders, um, and here we are, best friends, still after 30 odd years. And she said, because she wants to move too. So despite the fact we're, we're best, best friends, but we have quite different taste, and we were describing what the other one should have, and we both got it perfectly. I was like, she should have a really cool, modern, but Scandi, modern, vibe to her place i can imagine her in a modern apartment it's always called an apartment if it's modern isn't it but yeah that kind of cool 60s 70s scandy vibe would be so her and she said you have to have a period property she said there's nothing nothing more modern than 1910 for you we were like yeah yeah that's, that's exactly what i want and that's exactly what she wants so um and hopefully we might be able to help each other a little bit I have said to her that I'm, you know, I'm so, especially now without my sister, I am terrified of house hunting on my own. So um, she hopefully might come with me when we get to that stage. But anyway, um, she did say when we were talking about what the other needs, she said, she, the only flat you can possibly look at, she said, I can see it, I can see it in my head. She said, you have to have a kitchen with a back door into a garden. I'm gonna cry at the thought, <laughs> it's a happy thought. Yeah, she said, that's it. You have to have a kitchen with a back door into a garden. And I was like, you know what? Yeah, that's now on my must haves. That's what I need for the rest of my life now. I need to be able to step out of my door into my garden with a book. And then I've got everything I need in life, a book and a garden. So, Back to Susan's lovely notebook. As soon as I saw that, I thought, you know what, I'm saving this. This is going to be one of the last things I pack when I move, so that it's one of the first things that comes out of the boxes, because this will be my planning for the new home. So when I move in, what do I want to do? What, you know, so this will be for things like paint swatches, wallpaper swatches, fabric swatches. It will be doodles of how I imagine a room to look. Uh, it will be doodles for my garden, planning my garden. It will be all of that, just as I did when I moved in here. Now, 
This is a really old one. This is 20 years ago. And on the very, this is the very first page of it. And what made me laugh about this is, I'll show it to you in a second. I did a sketch to visualize how I wanted something in this flat to look. And I made this sketch, yeah, 20 odd years ago, 20 years ago. And I've only, fi I've only finally just now achieved it. So I don't know if you'll be able to make it out, but this is, can you sort of see it's, it's window sills, they're in the eaves. Can you make out the eaves? So it's my bathroom window sill and my kitchen window sill. And this, so this is what I kind of dreamed of and planned for the bathroom, was to have three little terracotta pots with geraniums and then for the kitchen, three little terracotta top terracotta pots with lavender the lavender never happened and it, it wouldn't be right indoors or on that north facing shady but i have finally now got my geraniums my three little terracotta pots it only took 20 years listen if i set out to do something i do it i might not do it overnight <laughs> but yeah it was um so i saw i i unpacked i unpacked it's not unpacked what is it i unwrapped this and as soon as I saw the quote I thought you know what I know exactly what I'm going to do with that notebook that's going to be for the new home so I can start drawing sketching doodling writing lists to 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 help me to start imagine the what I'm going to print onto that new home my decor my taste etc and as soon as I thought I thought oh and I fished this off the shelf to remind myself that 20 years ago I had a vision for the bathroom window and I finally got round to it. The um, then you can't read this this oops this is a oh that's me in a dress rehearsal. Oh that's so funny a photograph's just fallen out. You won't recognise me I doubt it's a dress rehearsal but oh my god I'm, I was so skinny. That's me. <laughs> All right, in the purple, the camera is going to struggle. Oh, yeah. Anyway, you get the gist of it. That was a gorgeous, gorgeous dress. That was, um... God, what's the name of the play? <sighs> it's a schnitzler play. Everything's disappearing out of my brain. Anyway, um, I was trying to say that they... <laughs> that's that and there's a list written sideways across the bottom that's just done me for a that's just properly done me anyway um this was my once list when i moved into this place 20 years ago a big station clock for the kitchen venetian glass mirror for the bathroom <laughs> Chandelier! <laughs> I want to do chandelier on these low ceilings, that's absurd. I wanted a Philip Stark ghost chair. Oh! So one, two, three, four, fifth on my list when I moved in here, I've written, I don't know if you'll be able to make it out, can you make that out? Allotment! I wanted an allotment. Frames for all my pictures. Wayne scales, a coffee slash side table, a bedside table, a lighting solution for the main room, a bin, <laughs> I needed a bin, Wellington boots and a Wellington boots rack. Oh, <laughs> right at the bottom of the list, a lover. <laughs> well, that's hilarious. Um, oh, and then at the bottom it says, maybe another dog, a sister for Charlie. My little Charlotte Bronte. Oh, and time to finish my patchwork. It's hardly been out of the cupboard since. Gosh, that's funny. Isn't it? I haven't looked at that for 20 years. So 20 years ago, when I moved in here, simple once, a station clock, a Venetian glass mirror, a chandelier, a Philippe Stark ghost chair. Oh, don't want one of those now. An allotment, frames for my pictures, a coffee table, a bedside table, a bin, Welly boots, a lover, another dog, and time for sewing. 
Wow. Wow, wasn't expecting that. Yeah. Anyway, goodness me, and that photograph falling out has just thrown me for a loop. So there we go. I think I've been waffling for ages now, haven't I? But um, just enjoying this, that's what I mean. It's just, it's time to, it, I enjoy this time of year. It's quiet out there. There is activity. People are, you know, back to work and stuff. But it's quiet in here. I am whipping this place into shape. There's a lot to do for the flat as we go into next year. I am in equal measures daunted and excited and terrified, but that's okay. We might talk more about that on New Year's Eve. So yeah, I think for now I'm going to shut up. I will see you again. Hopefully, now I'm getting chilly. I think the sun's going down. <laughs> It's not going down, it's too early for the sun to go down, but I think it's just getting a bit cloudy and a bit wetter out there. So yeah, it's, um, I hope I'll see you New Year's Eve. That's the plan, but if not, I'll see you into next year at some point. But for today, for this one, I really, I'm gonna now go, I'm gonna say cheerio, cheerio, cheerio to all of you, because I want to have an, a deep dive into this 20 year old notebook and see what else I, I dreamed for myself and see what I achieved and see about the things which I didn't achieve but when I look back on now I think, yeah, not bothered, not bothered that I didn't have that or I didn't get that or didn't do that. Because as we change in life, some things become more important, some things become less important, don't they? Right, oh yeah, I am suddenly really chilly. So for now, lovely people, Look after yourselves. Uh, I hope you are still having a lovely holiday-ish time if you've still got family around or you know, you're know you about to see family, other family, friends for New Year's. Whatever you're up to, that I hope you're happy doing it. And if you're like me, enjoy doing a bit of really early spring cleaning. All right, lovelies, until the next one, cheerio.